We are pleased to present the International Hydro Diplomacy, Building and Strengthening Regional Institutions for Water Conflict Prevention, pre-conference study commissioned and led by the Konrad Adenauer Stiftung with support from the Stimson Center. International Hydro Diplomacy, Building and Strengthening Regional Institutions for Water Conflict Prevention by Farwa Amir. Water, a resource that is becoming increasingly scarce, is critical in sustaining human life. The last century has witnessed a multifold increase in global water demand, despite its waning availability. The rapidly growing urban populations, coupled with increasing impacts of climate change, have further exacerbated this challenge. More than two-thirds of the global population live with water-scarce conditions at least one month of the year. If current trends continue, water scarcity, with its cross-sectoral implications on politics and economy, has the potential to challenge national, regional and international security as countries across the globe compete for shared water resources. The situation is even more alarming when evaluating transboundary water governance, wherein power asymmetries between upstream and downstream countries are threat multipliers in already fragile and vulnerable socio-political environments. There is thus an urgent need for an inclusive and pragmatic approach to water governance at both regional and international levels. This approach should employ hydro diplomacy, multi-stakeholder engagement, and institution building to reinforce greater cooperation over shared water resources. The chapters in the study are each devoted to three of the most water-stressed regions in the world, the Himalayas, Central Asia, and the Euphrates-Tigris River Basin. Each region is vexed with finite transboundary water resources which have long been politicized. Tensions between riparian states engender a zero-sum approach to water sharing in the absence of robust frameworks for sustainable and long-term cooperation. The analysis and recommendations to build such frameworks presented in each region-specific chapter was made possible courtesy of selected regional experts with extensive knowledge and field experience in international hydro diplomacy and transboundary river basins. Institutions and International Hydro Diplomacy A primary step towards comprehending the appetite of formal institution building and water governance frameworks is to understand the term hydro diplomacy itself. Hydro diplomacy comprises two conceptual frameworks, water diplomacy and science diplomacy, which define ways in which countries can work together to resolve water resource problems at their shared borders. In this context, hydro diplomacy embraces the engagement of both state and non-state actors to allow for diverse stakeholder interests. Over the past century, there have been various attempts to navigate the complex and intricate environment of transboundary water governance, including international efforts at different levels and in different regions. The 1992 UNECE Water Convention, enforced in 1996, served to be an important international instrument which requires cooperation between riparian countries to prevent, control and reduce transboundary impact. In the same vein, in a range of regions, formal agreements and treaties surfaced over the years to legally facilitate integrated water management. However, these treaties have not been entirely effective in keeping water conflicts at bay due to hostile political relations and power asymmetries between riparian states which mean that cooperation remains conditional on political and strategic national interests compromising and often violating the terms of any formal transboundary agreements. Regional politics can often weaken the already fragile regulatory frameworks that dictate transboundary water management. For example, the Indus Waters Treaty of 1960, a bilateral water-sharing agreement between India and Pakistan, serves as a case in point. The treaty is weak 
in that it offers no adaptive rules or protocols to cope with extreme weather events and other looming water stressors that require collaboration between India and Pakistan on long-term solutions. Similarly, in the Euphrates-Tigris River Basin, existing treaties and memorandums of understanding alone do not have enough leverage to outmaneuver political schisms between Turkey, Iraq, and Syria. Therefore, these agreements must be supplemented by hydro-diplomacy efforts and regional institutions and river basin organizations. Such institutions will serve as a regional or basin-wide platform for conflict resolution by enabling all riparian states to work with one another on both political and technical levels, drive research and hydrological data sharing, enable means for multi-sectoral, industrial, private, and non-governmental organizations, and multi-stakeholder coordination, and employ transparency and accountability. Once foundations for joint institutions and basin management plans are laid, an all-inclusive, consensus-driven, and unbiased decision-making process will help engender a goal-oriented and benefit-sharing approach, as opposed to the widespread zero-sum attitude. The Senegal River Development Organization, a potent regional entity responsible for equitable water sharing among countries along the Senegal River in Africa, sets a good example in this case through its effective planning and development contributions to the region. Nevertheless, in other key water stress areas like the Himalayas, Central Asia, and Euphrates-Tigris River Basin, the securitization and politicization of transboundary water resources, coupled with weak institutional capacity, a subject discussed more broadly in this study, have restricted the aptitude of cooperative transboundary mechanisms achieved by the likes of OMVS. The EU and Transboundary Water Governance Institutions If scarce water resources are viewed only strategically, there is a strong likelihood of shared waters becoming a source of contention and competition between riparian states. This possibility alone warrants international attention. The ever-changing security and environmental context make it imperative for internal and external stakeholders to discuss water issues more efficiently within policy making. To that end, the European Union has shown a vested interest in expanding its water diplomacy initiatives to support global water governance. EU's Water Framework Directive of 2000 provides a good example for member states to follow a more holistic approach towards water management, outlining that for river basins extending beyond the boundaries of the community, member states should endeavor to ensure the appropriate coordination with the relevant non-member states. The Council conclusions in 2013 also recognize the gravity of water scarcity and related conflicts across the globe that would not only adversely impact the EU, but also international security. The Council conclusions in 2018 reiterated that a key objective of EU water diplomacy is to engage for the long term in fostering cooperative approaches to address the transboundary challenges of water. The EU stands ready to work in partnership with others to promote collaborative and sustainable water management, encouraging and supporting regional and international cooperation. Additionally, EU member states like the Netherlands, Germany, Slovenia and Finland have repeatedly set an example through their continued engagement in the water sector, whether by means of enhancing quality, climate adaptation, or knowledge sharing within the EU borders and even across. Although transboundary water governance is often beleaguered by the tragedy of the commons, the commonality of water-related issues also makes a strong case for greater inter- and intra-regional cooperation, both through back-channel diplomacy and third-party solicitation. The EU has made credible progress when it comes to regional cooperation over water vis-à-vis -vis initiatives such as the EU Central Asia Platform for Environment and Water Cooperation 2009, and the EU Regional Environmental Programme for Central Asia. Similarly, the India-EU Water Partnership, established in Brussels in 2016, launched a cooperative initiative to jointly work towards enhancing the efficiency effectiveness and sustainability of water management in India. 
The EU is also an important influencer in the Mekong Basin through the financial support for the Mekong River Commission and has capacitated the MRC to bring in new reforms, deliver on its strategic plans for integrated water management and the basin-wide water cooperation. Through these initiatives, the EU has advanced global engagement on water issues over the years and has the potential to further build on its model and best practices to support cooperative regional water mechanisms in other regions going forward. However, the EU's engagement, as well as knowledge concerning those water-impoverished and conflicted regions, is still limited. The often intense and convoluted nature of transboundary water sharing in conflict-prone regions means that the EU must employ additional undertakings to fully deliver on the industrious aims of the Council conclusions and truly emerge as a leader in the field of international hydro diplomacy. Foremost, there is a compelling need for the EU to have open channels of communication with the various strings of stakeholders in each region or river basin as each has its own unique geographic, political and economic situation that needs to be navigated. There has to be a transparent understanding of all cross-sectoral impacts of water scarcity and security in each region. Additionally, given the lack of development funds allocated towards water infrastructure or institutional capacity building in regions like the Himalayas or South Asia, the EU can work with stakeholders and river basin commissions, much like its cooperation with MRC, to create contingency plans and foster the initiation and expansion of nonpartisan regional cooperative mechanisms. This can be achieved by encouraging the High Representative, the European Commission and member states to give necessary condition to the importance of water and sanitation in the programming of future financial and technical cooperation with partner countries, including under the next multi-annual financial framework. The EU should work in tandem with the private sector to fill the investment gaps which cannot be covered by public finance alone. The world of transboundary water governance offers the EU an opportunity to be a broker of peace in water-stressed and conflict-prone regions. The EU can build on its multifaceted experiences in the field of development cooperation to support regional integration on water issues and aid transboundary water initiatives. However, there has to be a more persistent, coordinated and diligent effort to make a significant breakthrough and facilitate long-term solutions for the looming water crisis existing beyond its borders. At CUS MDPD, we design and implement multi-stakeholder dialogues, focusing on the nexus of democracy and governance, peace and security, and climate and energy. Join our LinkedIn community, tag us in your tweets, and add us on Facebook. Thank you for tuning in to us on SoundCloud, Spotify, and YouTube. Visit our website for our latest publications. <laughs>